Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel and today we're going to be tying a white wing blue charm. Here in Newfoundland, white wing blue charms are very effective patterns for Atlantic salmon. Basically it's a traditional hair wing blue charm, but instead of a dark wing on that, it, it's, it's a, a white wing. Today we're using Maruto M30 and for this video I use a rather larger hook which is a uh, number 4. So first up we're going to tie in some extra small Vivas French tinsel. Once I lock that in, I just kind of bring the thread up a little bit, and that's, oops. I'll bring the thread up a little bit where I want to stop. And when we're wrapping, we try to keep an eye on keeping our um, wraps flush and make sure there's no spaces in between. And we can wrap that up to where we're going to tie in our butt section. It is a rather large hook, so we can tie in a rather large butt on it. So I'm going to bring the thread back. And basically by doing this, um, you get to create that extra piece for a hood and um, you also build up a little bit of bulk in that area before you lay down your color. So today we're going to be using a uh, yellow uh, glow bright gloss, it's a micro gloss. And when we do this, this is going to eventually be the hood that we bring over. Every time. All right, try that again. And now that we lock that in, we bring both back and just allow space to bring this forward. We leave this section behind and we make nice close wraps. We're using white thread for this because it's easier to see on that black hook and also in this butt section it doesn't show through the material. You can come right back down and up again too if you want to build a little bit more bulk on this and it makes the color a little bit more rich. Uh, today we're just going to do one pass so you get the idea. Now that we tie that in, slip away that access, and we bring our hood forward. The purpose of a hood on these flies is to protect the butt section from fraying and slipping back over. That basically ties it all in and locks it in place. So our next material that we tie in but we won't be using till later is the rib section that will be going down the body and for this we're using a medium tinsel. On a uh, hook this size, medium would be an appropriate uh, rib size. And basically I tie enough that when it's tied in under it will create bulk in the body like so and we bring this back down so a smart way to think about this and if you always keep this in mind you shouldn't have a problem with proportions but um, so you have your back um, tag section I believe it's called and you have your butt your butt should encase your tag your body should encase your butt so every part you're doing afterwards should encase the last piece um, it did our next item that we're using is a golden 
golden pheasant crest and we pick out a piece that has a nice clean um yeah that will do that size appropriate and has a nice clean curve in it and basically i just strip this down take that off don't need that and you line it up where you want it i like a little bit of a bigger pheasant tail I've always looked at this as your pheasant tail should come up and meet your wing. So my wing will probably be landing before that, but um, that's what I was always taught. So this is all we have to do on the back end. We're going to leave this ribbing here because this comes on after we've tied in our body. And we give ourselves lots of space between where we're stopping here and the, this hook eye because we still have a lot to do there. I don't have my whip finisher, so I guess I will be trying this with my hand, which I'm not overly comfortable doing yet. That's good. I know. All right. Save a bit of time. I'd already the reason why I tied that off is because I have my um, uni stretch in black on a bobbin, and it'll just I'll be able to speed up this video a bit, save myself some time. We're gonna wind this all the way back and then all the way front again, and that should give us enough bulk for what we're looking for here. And any spaces that you miss, um, you'll get a chance to come back over that. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but if you can cover it, cover it up. And you can see that I have these fingers here um, holding down on my pheasant crest while I'm holding the hook as well. And that's because when I come up here with my floss, I don't want to hit that and move it out of the way. I have it where I want it. So then we come back down. This pass matters because this is the one that's going to show. So we just try to make it as nice looking as we can. There you go. So now we're going to bring in some black thread um, because now we're going to be leaving this thread on right until the end of this fly. Oops. So while <laughs> I was going to say while I'm holding the end, I'm twisting this around until it catches, but I let go by mistake. All right, so we can take our thread end and our floss and we can cut that. Got a little piece hanging off there. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. You're gonna leave the thread up near the front now because we need to put our ribbing on. So ribbing's uh, great in the way that it protects your body floss in a lot of the same way that this hood protects this butt in the back. This locks everything in gives it a nice little shine underwater and uh, so I put five um, rules or five rules five ribs on my flies and uh, it, it's kind of a general rule to use five um, you know you, you can use what you like the fish don't know the difference but if you want to try to have um, some consistency consistency within your flies um, Whatever you're going to choose, make sure you do that on all of them. Alright, so we have that done now and um, we're going to continue on with the throat. So for throat material today, we're going to be using um, Schlappen, however the heck you pronounce it. I think it's Schlappen. Schlappen a base. Um, and when I'm preparing my Schlappen, I uh, basically flare this out. 
okay, that piece doesn't want to cooperate, and that's fine. And you're trying to make your ends match up. When you get them matched up, I just take this, and I go like that. Then I check it out, you know, that's pretty close. And that's not quite enough what I like, so I'll get another little clump here, do the same thing again, and then, and that's pretty, I'll give that a little piece of hole there. I'll match those up with the other ones down on the table. And then I'll just kind of check it out myself and, you know, if there's any pieces that are really sticking out or pieces, I'll either pull them out or try to adjust them in hand. But that should work nice. So a lot of people turn their vice upside down and I probably would have done that had I learned that way, but I just tie it in underneath like so. I bring my thread up, around, around, and then I just give my throat a good look. I'm, I'm okay with that. And then come in. And, oh no! That will happen. Let's see if we can come back from it. It's hard doing these videos because I'm at awkward angles. It's normally not how I would be tying. This isn't my desk or this is my kitchen table, so it's nothing's at the right height. And I'm not going to make excuses, but that rarely happens when I'm at my desk. So, okay, we came back from that, you know, no harm, no foul. The throat's still in place. We are able to tie the thread back on. And you know what? Seems like I have a mistake that happens in every one of these videos, and it's always cool to know how to come back from something. So we're doing a white wing today. I mentioned that we're going to be doing um, what I just said, a white wing. But today we're using faux bucktail. Um, I've talked about this product before. Uh, it's awesome. I really, really love it. You don't need a lot of it. Um, basically, and you got to go to the end to look at what you have because it's hard to tell from the base when you're pulling it out. And then I just give it a little pluck. The unfortunate thing about faux bucktail for these purposes is I'm about to waste this much because I have no idea what to do with it. So I just kind of grab the ends, give myself lots of room, more than I need. And then I will put it in my hair stacker. Give it a quick stack. I mean, it, this stuff doesn't need much. And then it's all straightened up. Grab that. Now I like to measure my wing out, and we talked about this golden pheasant, and really you want the tips touching the tips on that, and that's how it should look. So I make a mental note of where I want to cut in relation to the finger that was holding it. It takes a little bit of getting used to at first, but... Um, so I have these in my fingertips now. This is a better thing to do when you're not holding on to this stuff, but... I use this tires wax because um, faux bucktail is extremely slippery and you really want to wax to help you hold it on when you're tying. And we split, if you can see what I just did there in this uh, second camera, is we, I come down and I kind of split this clump in two and usually, yeah, and then I come back and grab the rest of it. The reason why we do that is, yeah, that'll work, is um, it, it grips the wing a lot better um, that way. And you don't have the wing where it's so slippery slipping down on the sides of the hook. It stays on top. Of course, I am very unprepared right now. I don't even have my, <laughs> my uh, bobbin here, so... Use what you got at hand, which is right now the tip of my scissors. Just wipe it off afterwards, guys. Don't leave that on there. That's, that's terrible for your scissors, and I don't recommend doing that. But All right, so now that we got a little bit of head cement on there, basically that's going to um, solidify this hook or this fly, the wing in it. I mean, between splitting it in two and um, putting that head cement on, that wing's not going anywhere. 
Uh, again, I still don't have my bobbin, so let's try a hand. Oh my goodness. As you can see, I'm not overly comfortable with this yet. I'll get there. And folks, that is a white wing blue charm. If you like this, uh, like a moose wing on your flies, um, I mean, here in Newfoundland, moose is king. Moose on all dark wing flies here work extremely well on pretty much any of our rivers we have. So this full bucktail is really a lot of the same um, fiber diameter as moose, and this stuff just kills it on our rivers. Um, I've loved it for a couple of years now. I got the idea from another tire. And honestly, I don't think I fish a whole lot of white wings anymore without faux bucktail. So thanks for popping in and watching the video. If you enjoy some of the other content on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if not, I'm just uh, happy to have you guys along and I hope this helped. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.